Panic viewers, welcome to Mode Shock. Uh, today I'll be discussing some more questions, IPC pattern questions on economic importance of bacteria from the class 9 syllabus. And uh, next video will be some more questions of uh, economic importance of bacteria and fungi and nutrition chapter of class 9 syllabus. Again. Okay. So uh, before I start, I would request you to please to subscribe my channel if you have not subscribed yet or if you are a new viewer to my channel, okay? And if you are liking the videos, press the like button, share with your friends so that they can also be benefited from these videos and do meditate before you start your day, okay? So let us also start with the day, start of our day with a short meditation. So for that, uh, please concentrate on the conscious light. Thing that light is falling with you and you are getting energy from the light. Your enthusiasm is being doubled. You're getting more interest in your work. You're liking the work very much. Enjoying your work. Enjoying your studies. And Solving your problems much better. In class, you're getting good marks in your exams and great appreciation for everyone. Please thank you, God, for being with you and helping you in every step of the way. Please, let's keep your work and start with that. So, why bacteria are not plants? Why bacteria are not plants? Because bacteria are prokaryotic. Okay, they do not have chlorophyll, that is one reason. In other words, they are prokaryotic. They are single celled organisms without being in, in, place, in place of being eukaryotic or multicellular, they are eukaryotic and unicellular. And also, they are, they do not have children. So, this is the reason they are not considered as plants. Where do we find bacteria in our body? They are found in many uh, places in our body, that is in the mouth, on the skin, inside our intestines, in the genital tracts, etc. Okay, and why some in intestinal bacteria are beneficial? Why they are beneficial? Because they can synthesize vitamins like vitamin B. Okay, some vitamins can be synthesized from bacteria, intestinal bacteria, especially vitamin B. Okay, what is an average size of the bacterium? It's 2 micrometers long and 0 0.5 micrometers. The size of the bacterium, larger size is 2 micrometers long and 0 0.5 micrometers. So, such small is the size of the one bacteria. Okay. Now, what is the slimy protected layer outside the cell wall of the bacteria called? It's called the capsule, which protects it from any un, uh, unfavorable conditions. Okay. Uh, what is the mode of nutrition in bacteria? As they lack chlorophyll, their mode of nutrition is exotropic. Okay. They, they may be saprophytic or paraphytic. Okay. Now, how fast can bacteria reproduce under ideal conditions and by which means they can reproduce once in every half an hour? And under ideal conditions, uh, under ideal conditions, they can reproduce on half, every half an hour and by means of, they reproduce by means of cell division or by fission, binary fission. Uh, then what do the bacterial cell does to overcome unfavorable conditions? It forms a spherical mass around it, which becomes surrounded by, I mean, that spherical mass is, uh, sorry, the, they, the bacterial cell forms a spherical mass. That means it gets concentrated into a spherical mass around which a thick, hard, protective layer wall uh, is formed, which is known as total uh, mass 
total mass that is the spherical mass with the protective layer is known as core. Okay. How can spores withstand unfavorable conditions? The spores can withstand, they can tolerate extreme dryness. Okay, they can withstand the high temperatures as well as low temperatures. High temperatures means boiling temperatures of water and even frozen ice can also be tolerated by the spores. They can some of them can also tolerate poisonous chemicals. Okay. And when the favorable condition returns, the spores uh, burst and they can uh, get their life again. Then mention the source of organism and the disease treated with the following antibiotic. Penicillin, uh, source organism for a tetanus diphtheria is penicillium trichogenum. Then streptomycin is the uh, antibiotic which treats tuberculosis and which works on streptomyces gryphoid. Okay. Then Chlorotetracycline, that is for typhoid, and the uh, organism which forms this typhoid is a vegetative antibiotic that is streptomyces orophasis. Okay. Erythromycin for the rickettsial fever that acts against Saccharopolyspora erythraca. What are the criteria for a good antibiotic? A good antibiotic should be able to kill a variety of disease-producing microorganisms. That should, that is, they have, they should have a broad spectrum antibiotic. They should be broad, they should be a broad spectrum antibiotic because they can kill a variety of disease-producing microorganisms. Okay? It should not produce undesirable side effects should not have any undesirable side effects or it should not kill good bacteria, normal bacteria which is present in the host. Okay, it should not kill that, it should not produce uh, undesirable side effects and it can kill disease producing of the organism, variety of diseases. That should be a good okay. Now what is meant by toxins and antitoxins? Toxins are what? Toxins are poisonous proteins which is released by the pathogens, like bacteria. Okay. Which is released by pathogenic bacteria, I say, when they grow or when they break down after the death. Okay. When they are growing, they release some uh, proteins, poisonous proteins. When these pathogenic bacteria they grow, they release some. Uh, Package, uh, I mean, they release some poisonous protein, or when they die, they will they, they are they break down, and that also releases some poisonous protein. So that is known as toxin. And antitoxins, antitoxins are substances which is produced within the animal. Okay, in within the animal bodies, which uh, react with the toxin produced by invading germs. For example, see when uh, a germ enters a body. So for example, this and the germ is a pathogenic bacteria that has released some pro that will release some protein when they get inside our body. Okay? And our body will react with that uh, toxin to produce a chemical substance. That is known as antidote to fight against that toxin. Okay, so that's to fight against that toxin. Our body produces some chemical substance. That is known. Clear? What had, uh, what has made it possible to introduce the human gene in certain bacteria like E. coli? This is the process of genetic engineering. Genetic engineering has made it possible to introduce human genes to certain bacteria. Name the first substance which is produced by E. coli 
with the process of genetic engineering that is the hormone insulin. Yes. What is that purpose? Insulin uh, helps to convert glucose in the blood to glycogen and stores it in the liver. So that hormone insulin, insulin was first produced, first substance that is produced by E. coli while with the process of genetic engineering. Now, name to serum compounds which are produced by genetically modified bacteria and their yeast. First is blood clotting factor H. What is it? For? What is its purpose? It's for the treatment of hemophilia A. And factor 9 for the treatment of hemophilia B. Mm -hmm. Two serums, blood clotting factor H and factor 9. Factor 8 is for Hemophilia A to treat hemophilia A and factor 9 is for treating hemophilia B. Okay. Now, what is vaccination? Vaccination is introduction, is to introduce a weakened germ or a dead germ inside a body. Okay, inside a body, inside a living body for developing resistance to a particular disease. So that the body in the, into which the uh, germ is to be introduced, the weakened germ or the dead germ is introduced, that develops a resistance, that develops an immunity to a particular disease. Here, that uh, process is known as vaccine. That is introduction of the weakened germ. That giving uh, that inoculation of the uh, weakened germ or dead germ inside the body, that the process is Okay. Now, how do vaccines provide immunity? We know that if uh, if a, a dead germ or a weakened germ is introduced inside the body of a of a person of a person, then the person develops a resistance against this particular, particular disease. So that is vaccination. But how does vaccine produce immunity inside that person? When vaccines are injected into a body, the person gets the disease in a mild form. He gets, he or she gets the disease in a mild form, and his body is stimulated to produce antitoxins, the toxins which are introduced inside the body. And the body will, the body into which the, the substance is in, injected, that body will produce antitoxins, which provide immunity against that disease, any, uh, any future attack of a particular disease. If any future in any in any future the uh, another attack is taking place that but taking place inside the body the body has already that germ and that body has already uh, produced antitoxins which is present in, in his or her blood that is producing immunity inside the body okay name two vaccines obtained by growing bacteria TAB vaccine and BCG vaccine. TAB vaccine is for typhoid, which is killed bacteria. Okay. And BCG vaccine for tuberculosis, which is a living, weakened bacteria. Okay. Now, what are toxoids? Toxoids are inactivated toxins. Toxoids means toxin like. Oid means like. So, similar to toxins. But here the toxins are inactivated form. They are in the inactivated form of a particular bacteria which can still stimulate the production of a respective antibody. Okay, though they are in inactive form, but they can still stimulate our body to produce antitoxins or antibodies okay, inside the inside our body. Okay. For example, those for producing immunity against diphtheria and tetanus. Okay. Diphtheria and tetanus can have this uh, immunity. Okay. Next is name a special category of soil bacteria. And mention where is, is it found. Soil bacteria is rhizobium and they are found living in small nodules on the roots of the, in the small nodules or in the roots of the leguminous plant, for example, beans. 
name a bacteria which convert ammonium compounds into nitrate. It's a nitrosomone bacteria which produces, which can convert ammonium compounds to nitrites. And nitrites to nitrates, that is nitrobacter. Which bacteria converts soil nitrates to free nitrogen? That is nitrifying bacteria, we call it. It is Pseudomonas. Mention two modes uses of bacteria. We know it uses antibiotics. Okay. It helps in digestion if it lives in the inside our body, it helps in digestion. Okay. Like that, many uses are. But some more uses are it provides flavor of the tea. It produces flavor of the tea, gives the flavor of the tea. Even it breaks down the soft, perishable parts in the hide, of the hide during leather tanning. When there is leather tanning taking place, that uh, bacteria perishes the, uh, I mean, break down the perishable parts of the hide, of the skin. Okay. What is meant by botulism? Botulism is a disease. It's a food poisoning, serious, very serious food poisoning due to which the special bacterium, which is sometimes found in the tinned or sealed food. Okay, due to a special bacterium. How does it, how is it caused? Due to the special kind of bacteria which is present in, sometimes in the tinned food or sealed food. That causes this food poisoning, special, very uh, serious type of food poisoning occurs uh, during this botanism. Why do we need to preserve food and make it free from disease causing germs? Why do we need to preserve food? To prevent microbial contamination so that it is not contaminated by microbes. Okay? To kill the pathogens. So that the pathogen which is inside the food that can be killed. Okay? To Minimize food spoilage and food poison so that the food is not spoiled or food poisoning is not happening. And to minimize that, okay, food is not spoiled, food does not become stale. Okay? So to minimize that, their food needs to be preserved and made it disease free. Okay? What is the high temperature at which food is boiled in? Boiled to sterilize. At about 110 degrees centigrade, the food is boiled to make it sterilized. What is the advantage of cooking in an autoclave or pressure cooker? What happens when we are cooking a substance or when we are cooking a dish in an autoclave or in pressure cooker, the pressure inside the vessel increases. Okay. And that can kill the spores which is present in the food. Even the spores can be killed by this process. That's why uh, it's better to use cooker, pressure cooker or an order to cook. What is curing? Curing is a treatment of food like pickle, cheese, fish, etc. with salt for preservation of preservation purposes. To preserve food. Okay, to preserve food. Treatment of the food like pickles, cheese, fish, etc. with salt. Okay, to preserve the food. That is the cure. Okay, the process of cure is preserving the food. What does canning industry employ before packing and steaming food and why? It employs heating. That is, it heats the food. Before packing and sealing, it heats the food. Why? To kill the bacteria present. Name an effective method of preservation of germs, uh, grains rather, preservation of grains, fish, vegetables, etc., and stages region. Okay. What is an effective method of preserving grains, uh, fish, meat, and uh, vegetables? It is dehydration or drying. Why? Because dehydration and drying. Uh, makes, I mean, it is used as more because most of the microbes they cannot grow without water, and dehydration and drying is 
away from water. We have to uh, take the water away from the food. When we are taking the water away from the food, the bacteria which may be present inside it will not be able to grow. Microbes will not be able to grow. What are the uses of ultraviolet light? It sterilizes the air in schools in any place, that is schools, hospitals, factories, and even it kills the mold holes in the doctor vaccine, in the bakeries. In bakeries, where there is mold holes are there, that can also be killed. What is the technique of partial sterilization, uh, usually of milk, that is pasteurization? Suddenly, it, it's, it's taken to 50 degree temperature, heated, and suddenly it's cooled. So, half sterilization is done, partial sterilization is done. Some flowering bacteria still remains to convert the milk to form the curd. Okay. They can make the milk stain. Okay. At what temperature domestic refrigerator cools? For what type of storage temperature at which the domestic refrigerator cools is 0 to 5 degrees centigrade and it is for short term storage? At what temperature deep freezing cools? Sorry, cools. And for what type of storage temperature at minus 20 to minus 20 degrees centigrade for long term refrigerator for long term storage minus 20 to minus 20 degrees centigrade. How germs, uh, sorry, jams and pickles do not get spoiled. Why they do not get spoiled? Because there is a high concentration of sugar in jam and in pickles, high concentration of salt. Okay, that what that does what that will increase the concentration of the solute. Okay, that increases the solute concentration, and that will if there is any bacteria or any micro present that will plasmolize the cell, and it will plasmolize to such extent that the microbes will die. That means plasmolize is what it will take away the water from the from the microbial cell, okay? And that will dry the uh, microbe and it will die again. So that is also a preservation process. Then what preservation are sometimes added to tinned foods and kosher? What preservative is added is sodium benzoate. It's a chemical which is added to uh, tinned food or kosher. What are the symptoms of anthrax, the bacterial disease cattle? Symptoms are the body swells, the cattle body swells, and it will produce less milk. What are the symptoms of bovine tuberculosis? It's also a disease of the cattle. So what are the symptoms? It, in, in this uh, disease, the cattle's lung is affected, and there is a dry Okay. Next is what microorganism is employed for making beer? It's a yeast. It's a kind of yeast that is known as Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Okay. What is the source used for making wine and beer? For wine, it's grapes, and for beer, it's barley maltose. What are the characteristics of wine? Now, wine is such a substance which can quickly be absorbed into the body. In wine quantities, it can work as a stimulant, but when it is consumed in large quantities, it can harm a body, harm your body in many ways. It can be harmful in many ways. Alcoholics may develop a body. Uh, body disease and ailment okay which particularly the main, main uh, ailment is it produces in liver cirrhosis it causes liver cirrhosis okay. why yeast is used in bread making or baking industry why because when uh, we know that during bread bread making or baking flour is used okay flour flour contains starch and that starch is then converted during baking or bread making. The 
starch is converted to sugar. Okay. Now that yeast which is added into the dough, it changes to sugar, it ferments the sugar to produce carbon dioxide, which raises the dough to its to three times to its original volume. Okay, and now when baking is being taken place, the gas inside the dough, that is the carbon dioxide which is present in the dough, that bubbles okay, in the dough and it expands. And it makes that expanded, expanded form uh, due to that bubble, that will, uh, I mean, that will make the bread light and spongy. What nutrients are present in the cheese? Calcium, phosphorus, vitamin E, vitamin B, and high quantities of fat and protein. Okay. Curdling of milk is done by which bacteria? It is by lactobacillus. Where curd is uh, curd is called potted seed. When curd is called potted seed, when the curd is processed and I mean, when the curd is processed to remove the moisture, that is, when the moisture is removed from the curd, that part, that particular uh, curd is known as potted seed. Okay. Why microorganisms are added along with lactobacillus during curdling of milk? It is added to impart flavor to the cheese. In the, in the process of cheese making, in the process of curdling of milk, uh, Microorganisms are added. So this is added to give flavor to the cheese. Okay. What components are mixed to prepare compost for mushroom cultivation? First is wheat or paddy straw, then chicken manure, and some organic and inorganic fertilizer. Three things I do. That is wheat or paddy straw, chicken manure, some organic and inorganic fertilizer. So this is the end of today. Please go through this. If you have any doubt, please let me know. Please write in the email or box. If you have any doubt in other chapters also which I have taught, please do write in the uh, comment box or you can write in the email ID also that is K-A-S-T-U-R-I Sakturi74 at the rate gmail.com. And if you are liking the video, press the like button, share with your friends so that they can also be benefited from these videos. And if you are a new viewer to my channel and not subscribed yet, please do subscribe my channel for getting informed as soon as a new video is uploaded, okay? So I'm a little late, please to bear with me because it takes this question answer preparation takes a, a longer time to prepare and also I'm not physically so well. So please do bear with me, okay? As soon as I prepare it, I will soon upload as to for, for your Betterment, okay, so that uh, you can get benefits. Okay? And do meditate before you start your day. Okay? And do consider your, uh, your exams as they are a good sign for you. Okay, that will help you to learn many things. Your exams help you to learn many things. It's on, not only points for mistakes, but from your mistakes you can learn wherever you have to I mean, to, you, you can uh, clear up, you can uh, rectify your mistakes, okay? Where you have to be strong, you can know from that. So please don't fear from your exams. You take it as a good sign and do proceed. Okay? So thank you for joining us. Thank you.